You're listening to Fire Ecology Chats, a podcast series by the Association for Fire Ecology. Hello, everyone. My name is Bob Keane, and I am the host of the Fire Ecology Chats and also the editor of Fire Ecology. What we are doing is creating a podcast so that people will come and read some of the valuable articles that we have in Fire Ecology. Today, we have noted fire scientist Morgan Varner talking about a paper, a opinion piece that we just had in a synthesis of very important science. The name of the paper is Prescribed Fire Science, The Case for a Refined Research Agenda. Hello, Morgan. Hey, Bob. Could you uh, tell us who you are and uh, your role in this particular paper, please? I'm the director of fire research and a senior scientist at Tall Timbers Research Station in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, before that, I was a research scientist with the Pacific Northwest Research Station, uh, the Forest Service, and a professor for 12 years before that. Um, I'm a co-author on this paper along with a long list of um, scientists from Forest Service R&D, from a number of universities, uh, and land management agencies. The authors are all part of uh, a group of, of uh, scientists and managers that are called the Prescribed Fire Science Consortium. And they're folks who were uh, generally un- upset with uh, where the state of the science of prescribed fire was and is, and uh, were committed to moving it forward. So were there specific objectives or goals for writing this paper? Yeah, we, uh, a few of us were involved in a strategic planning session um, for Tall Timbers, ironically. It was when I was a professor and um, others were in different jobs. We all came together to serve on a, a strategic planning workshop. And what we noticed as we were trying to describe what Tall Timbers was, um, what their science was, that there was something that was undescribed in the literature and really um, not appreciated in science, and that was the science of prescribed fire or prescribed fire science. And um, it, it, for each of us, I think each each author would have a different story. For me, uh, as a professor for 12 years, I would introduce and teach the the innards of um, fire behavior models, of fire effects models, um, you know, how we think about meteorology and plume movement, smoke modeling. And uh, my students would always figure out that um, what they what we were learning, what I was teaching them was applicable to wildfires, but really didn't apply very well in a prescribed fire context. Um, and there's only so many times that you can nod and say, yeah, let's just move on. That's a good point. And so that was what really drove me to be more involved in it was trying to get to better decision support tools and really to appreciate and understand the science of prescribed fire. Great. So why don't you give us the elevator speech on just exactly uh, what was what what is in this paper that people would want to read? Yeah, well, um, as a little bit of background, before we jumped into it, we um, we wanted to make the case that it's understudied rather than being, you know, 18 people thinking that um, no one listens to us. And so we did a review of uh, fire ecology and the International Journal of Wildland Fire for a little bit more than a decade, and we found that um, the majority of the papers were not on prescribed fire. They were indeed on wildfire, in spite of uh, wildfire covering more acres annually than wildfire typically does, um, despite the fact that managers have to make, um, you know, planning decisions and decisions on the fly um, uh, related to prescribed fire application. Uh, the funding agencies also follow that same pattern. The Joint Fire Science Program and others overwhelmingly fund wildfire-related projects, and so it wasn't just our um, feeling of inadequacy. It was that there that it was true in the literature and true in um, in funding decisions. And so what we did was we broke down the different ways that um, really that prescribed fire differs from wildfire from a science standpoint, focusing on uh, fire behavior that maybe is the most graphic difference. Um, Wildfires are modeled and studied based on point ignitions or um, 
or single line ignitions, often with uh, you know backfiring operations that take place. But prescribed fires always have really complex ignition patterns, whether they're dots sprinkled across the landscape in a series or their lines that are, are meant to converge. And so those differences in ignition patterns are really difficult to model in the, in the traditional models. Um, and so it really calls for a concerted effort to get to uh, complex ignition patterns and how that affects fire behavior. Um, from that, um, similarly on smoke um, and emissions, prescribed fire is ignited almost always with a, some sort of smoke management, whether it's rudimentary or, or, um, or somewhat com complex, in that uh, you're trying to evacuate smoke, keep smoke away from um, neighboring communities, et cetera. Um, but the models that we use are much more coarse and they're built for, you know, where will smoke be tomorrow in a wildfire rather than where will it be at 1.30 when our ignitions are, are, um, are, are all, all a go. Um, and we also uh, address the topic of fire effects. Um, the journal and most of the authors are uh, focused on fire ecology, and so fire effects is our is our central area. And many of us have been frustrated for a while that uh, fire effects research tends to be at a, um, a really coarse scale, whether it's um, you know looking at fire severity with Landsat pixels or describing large burned areas in course categories of severity um, when the questions that we have, whether it's tree survival um, that a few of the scientists and I are interested in, we're interested in why individual trees die, um, not why, um, you know, not a percentage of trees that die across a landscape. And so it really, it highlights the disconnect between these scales that we think about and we investigate with wildfires versus prescribed fires. Um, we also discuss a little bit about the fuels um, in the same sort of way. Fuels at a really small scale matter for prescribed fire, uh, whereas wildfires tend to be described in, um, in fuel models or other quartz aggregations of, of fuels. And so we lose a lot of the complexity in our ability to, to model small scale phenomena. Hmm. And lastly, um, we address the issues related to uh, the social science of prescribed fire science. And I think this is this can be um, summed up in um, prescribed fire is uh, is fundamentally asking society permission, and uh, wildfires how society interacts is really asking for forgiveness. It's already an act that's occurred. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's an act of God. Um, whereas prescribed fire, you're definitely asking permission, and you're in a long-term relationship with those local communities. And so it's a a much different dynamic that deserves. Um, specific attention that's not just how does wildland fire interact with society. Very good. Uh, and I see in the paper you also cover the topic of uh, managed wildfires or wildfires managed for resource benefits. Uh, yeah. How are we different from prescribed fires and wildfires? Yeah, so, you know, when we, I presented this um, at a fire congress a few years ago and um, an unintended um, meaning that some people took from the from the talk was that this was we were trying to pit ourselves against wildfire so um you know prescribed fire never gets any love um and they thought we were trying to say that wildfire didn't matter and what we were trying to say was that um that prescribed fire mattered also and in thinking about the the um potential discoveries and the increased emphasis on prescribed fire science there are a lot of ways that um, wildfires benefit, the study of wildfires benefit. And the really the most clear connection between those somewhat disparate fields is, you know, is managing wildfires um, that, you know, have been called in the past prescribed natural fire and all the other names that have uh, been given to them. But they are, they are management interventions clearly with, it, with diverse ignition patterns um, where fire effects are often, you know, uh, primary, where if the fire is doing ecological good, they're, they're, um, it, it affects other subsequent decisions. And so we see that as a really neat bridge between um, science developed for wildfire, science developed for prescribed fire. There's a really cool nexus between those two, and that, and that nexus is managed, uh, managed wildfires. Great. So let's uh, do the closing comments here. Can you give us in, you know, a, a soundbite or something, the take-home message from this paper? 
Yeah, I think that you know the take home is um, in some ways we we uh, we took the charge that the editors gave us to be bold, um, and I think what the the <laughs> The central idea of a forum article is to stimulate conversation and thought. And um, we proposed, in some ways, we proposed a new branch of science. In reality, this this kind of science has been going on for a long time, um, and I think this gives it a home. Um, and I think we also lay out a really nice research agenda. Um, it's not exhaustive, but it, I think it shows that there are a lot of avenues that deserve a lot of research of attention, and maybe this provides the uh, the scaffolding for that sort of work to move forward in a thoughtful way rather than in a um, somewhat haphazard way. It's nice to put a name, put a moniker on something because it gives the the scaffolding for for how we do our work, where it fits in. It's nice to know where your work fits in and, and who it matters to. And I think putting a name on it uh, with a research agenda like we put forth, uh, I think I think will really help prescribe fire science to move forward. In your funding agencies, were there funds used to publish this? Yeah, um, the Prescribed Fire Science Consortium um, really was responsible for the bulk of it. It was really just getting scientists together, um, and we've done that over four or five large prescribed fire events across the country, Montana, Utah, Georgia, and Florida, um, and that's been funded by the Joint Fire Science Program and the National Fire Plan, and, and a lot of it has been funded by individual um, R&D branches and universities who know that this is an exciting new frontier um, and, you know, they're willing to, to invest in, in moving this forward. Well, thank you very much, Morgan. We really appreciate you uh, coming in and, ha and having this podcast. I'd like to thank you and the other 19 authors for a wonderful paper. It is uh, very important. I encourage people to read it. Thank you again, Morgan. Yeah, thanks, Bob.